What's up guys, this is Chris. We just did a Bitcoin update last night, but I wanted to give you a brief update today as well. And then I'm gonna give you three stocks that you might be interested in buying, three crypto related or three Bitcoin related stocks that you can invest in if you don't want to buy the direct coin. Now I did a previous video talking about a guide to the different ways that you can invest in cryptocurrency and why you wanna do that. I will link that in the description as well as up here for you guys to see. So looking at the action here today, you see the S&P 500 rebounded despite that tax news, as I mentioned, that is in the future. We don't even know if that's really going to happen. It's just a rumor. As far as the crypto world, you can see that crypto is still down over the past 24 hours. But of course, it has bounced back quite significantly since uh, I made that video last night. If we jump onto the charts over here, you can see that... Like I mentioned, we want to look for a sign of a reversal. It's 47,000 here. You see that there were some previous lows here in early March. So, you know, it wasn't the strongest support, I would say, right? I was looking for 45,000 to be a an actually strong indicator for a buy, but so far so good. Now, can it still drop over the weekend? Of course. So you still want to exercise some caution, but I will say this is very promising. All right, that it didn't have to go all the way down to 45 before seeing some strong dip buying. Uh, we did see higher volumes here today as well, right? So there are people getting in here. And when we look at the RSI, once again, I did say it was close to 30 oversold. So that is another reason why there might be some dip buying here. What I also liked is leading into the segment here today about the three stocks in the crypto or bitcoin space all right stocks you might want to buy when we look at the chart for marathon right marathon digital holdings you can see here despite the drop in bitcoin that it's opened low all right it dipped to as low as around 28 dollars per share which by the way you might say is a support level here because you have some support here in the 28 area and you also had some support here at 30 so the fact that it went ahead and closed above that very strongly four percent move here today is in fact pretty promising and i do like that so there are your supports and like i say here it did have a strong bounce despite the bitcoin drop so when something moves contrary to what you may think that definitely is a good bullish indicator in my personal opinion that this could be a bottom potentially for Mara Marathon Digital Holdings. And I'm going to go into the quick reasons why this could be a good investment for you. Now, I'm not gonna go super in depth in this one because I have done several videos on my channel about this, including my six stocks I'm buying video for the month of April, 2021. So I'm not gonna bore you, but what I will go over is some brief points here. Okay, point number one, this is going to be one of the largest mining operations that is publicly traded uh, and is based in the United States. They are gonna have 103,000 miners very shortly by Q1 2022. And they're gonna have that all on board, but they do have a rolling amount that is going to be shipped to them and added to their capacity over the next several months, right? Month by month. Uh, right now it's tracking at around, you know, a couple thousand miners per month that they're adding on. Towards the end of the year, it's gonna be tens of thousands. And that is gonna increase their capacity significantly. Um, they're only doing um, you know, about 200 Bitcoins in the first quarter of 2021 that was just passed. But you could see here that they're going to produce 55 to 60 Bitcoins a day, which would be thousands of Bitcoins per quarter. Multiply that by 50 something thousand. And obviously that's very significant revenue. They're projecting almost $103 million in revenue per quarter. At the end of the day, if Bitcoin drops to 50, 45, 40, 30, 25 even by 2022, the average Bitcoin production cost is only $4,500. The price of Bitcoin, obviously, is about 10 times higher than that currently. Anything over $4,500 is good to go. It is incredible, right? If you're going to make $100 million in profit and you get to keep 90 or $95 million, and that's straight income guys that's insane and talking about the valuation here if this company executes perfectly then we're looking at possibly one billion dollars in net income 
over the course of 2022. And this company is only worth around $3 billion here today. There's pretty much no company out there. Um, I'd be really hard pressed to find a company that trades at three times net income. Moving on to stock number two here is Voyager Digital, all right? Voyager Digital is a company that trades on the OTC market, so it may not be available on every brokerage. It's not available on Robinhood, I'm afraid, if you are a Robinhood investor such as myself too. But um, if you do have access to it, it's a very interesting company because this is a crypto brokerage. It's an app that allows you to buy and sell um, using US dollars. You could trade it for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for more than 50 different digital assets. And this is the competitive advantage that this has because that is more coins than even Coinbase itself. So, and by the way, it does offer some strong interest rates. I do believe some of them are even higher than Coinbase as well. Now, this company uh, suggests or claims that they do not charge commissions, but what they do is they follow a broker model. So they find the best place to, uh, the best exchange to fulfill your order with, all right? So you might place an order for Bitcoin for $50,000, right? They'll go ahead and fill your order at 50,000 um, or they'll match you with an exchange. But if they could find a lower price at exchange, let's say at that particular second, they could get Bitcoin price for 49,950. So they'll still fill you for $50,000 most likely, but they get to pocket that $50 difference. And that's how this company supposedly makes money. Right, and that's why it's commission-free, reliable execution because they're going across several exchanges, they're using artificial intelligence and um, a lot of software on their end to find the best deal. That's as far as the app experience. I wanna tell you about whether it's a good investment. So here are a couple of good reasons why it's a good investment. You can see that the executive team is very interesting. So it's made in NYC. Ironically, you cannot use Voyager Digital in New York or else I would. But you can see the founder was former VP brokerage at E-Trade. And the executive team has um, a lot of other financial experience in fintech, in traditional um, investment banking like Morgan Stanley, former CTO of Uber. When it comes to the adoption rate of this app to trade cryptocurrencies, I got to say it is super, 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 super impressive. So this company has been around for a couple of years, by the way, but was very, very small. All of a sudden though, you're seeing because of the crypto boom that happened at the end of last year, their revenues went from 1.7 million per month. It went all the way to 8.6 million in January. So that's already like a 5X month to month. And then February is another 2X from 8.6 to 20. So this company basically went in the span of two months from 2 million in revenue to 20 million in revenue. And when we look at the March update as well, you can see that key metrics grew in excess of 35%. So it sounds like for the month of um, March, they might have done 26 million, 27 million. Is that going to tail off depending on how Bitcoin does? Of course, most likely, right? If that were to happen, because these brokerages and exchanges as well as Coinbase, which we will talk about next, by the way, they are highly dependent on people buying and selling crypto. Astronomical rise so far, you would think, is this just a pump and dump? Is the move over? It went from a dollar to like $30 before dropping here. Well, it is only a $2.6 billion company. Keep in mind, this is the key thing here. I'm gonna calculate this, all right? So they just did 20, million in February, they did probably 25 to 30 million in March. We'll just say they do 30 million per month at this rate now for the rest of the year. So you put it all together, average of 30 million a month, that's $360 million in revenue for this year. Seems highly achievable based on the way they're going. 360 million and the market cap right now is 2.6. All right, it's 2.6 divided by 0.36 and you get a price to sales ratio of 7.2 that's that's actually really really good when i think about it because you look at many other fintech companies 
especially some in the crypto space. When you look at a company like Square, which does have some crypto exposure, that is also a price to sales that is higher at around 12. Okay. And then you could look at a couple of other stocks, you know, ultimately you will find that a price to sales of seven for a company that's growing like 50% a month in some months so far, um, or 30% it might tail off at, or even 20% at the end of the day, in this space, I think it is a very attractive valuation. And by the way, they're also trying to buy back 5% of the shares here for this company. It just announced that a couple days ago. All right, and the last Bitcoin stock to buy, the stock to buy number three is going to be Coinbase, all right? And this comes with a caveat. And before you completely dismiss the idea of buying Coinbase after this huge drop, I admittedly see in front of me here. Let's talk numbers. Let's talk, um, you know, some fundamentals and really get a sense of um, whether or not you should buy this. Even though a stock drops, it's not necessarily a bad investment, but we need to understand what is the risk reward here and at what price level would you be comfortable buying as well as your time horizon. If you wanna buy this and um, think Bitcoin is gonna to go to 100K tomorrow and Coinbase is gonna to go to 600 tomorrow, it's probably not for you. But you could see here that the price has pulled back around 33%. That's, that's pretty bad. And because it's a newly IPO'd stock, I can't go out here and tell you based off my technical analysis, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's only been trading for like a week or two. So there's not a lot of technical aspects you can go off of. I can't tell you with certainty. You know, I predict it'll bounce off of the support. It'll, you know, go back up 50% or whatnot. What you need to focus on here is the fundamentals at the end of the day. So when we look at Coinbase, you're gonna see some things here. Now, the price to sales ratio, as I touched upon earlier, is 42. 42 is very high. There's no two ways about it. But sometimes people will be willing to pay a high valuation. You know, these numbers are based off of the prior year. If their results this year are killing it and way higher than last year already, then some of these numbers do become irrelevant. And that explains part of Coinbase's high valuation on paper here. So when we go look at the Coinbase filing, you see the revenue for 2020 was about $1.2 billion right here on this line. That's a big jump from 2019 where they only did 500 million. But here's the kicker. See from this article that Coinbase estimates Q1 revenue jumped nine fold to about $1.8 billion ahead of its public market debut. So they're already in three months. They did the, the sales they did the entire last year, the entire 12 months of last year. So clearly big things are happening that revenue is growing exponentially and thus if you were to extrapolate this, and I would say it's definitely possible again, because you see more and more people going into crypto. And uh, as long as the price doesn't absolutely crash again, I think it's possible, you know, they could continue to grow. Um, you know, Q2 will definitely be higher than 2 billion probably. And then Q3 will be higher too. But even if we just extrapolate this number, the amount they did in Q1, 1.8 billion times four, that's already $7.2 billion in revenue. Um, so that's seven times higher than what they did last year or more than seven, um, depending on how bullish you're gonna be for the rest of this year. But if we take that $7.2 billion and we take the market cap of Coinbase right now, which is $54 billion, 54 divided by 7.2, that's a price of sales of only 7.5. And again, you compare this to other companies that are growing extremely fast, like Square um, and like Voyager Digital, by the way, that was a very similar price of sales around seven. And so overall, that's very, I like to say very inexpensive, but again, it does have some of that risk that some other companies might not have. For example, I really love C Limited, but it's a fast growing e-commerce company with not that much risk. Um, price of sales is much, much higher though, around uh, 29 to 30 here today. You, you, if, you're, if you're a bullish person, you might say crypto is gonna keep going higher and thus 
the valuation is just getting cheaper and cheaper when it was already cheap. If you're a bear, you will say that these prices are going to crash and the valuation is going to end up looking expensive because they're not going to achieve that revenue. They're not going to achieve that income. My personal opinion is I do tend to believe that crypto is not going to crash. So there you have it, guys. Those are my three crypto stocks to buy or crypto related companies that you might want to do some research as well. As always, there is always a risk and not every investment is right for every single person. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as far as the stocks and crypto coins going forward. Until next time, my friends, stay well, have a good weekend and invest responsibly.